to our meeting. Isn't it wonderful to be back and see faces and not screens? Uh, thank you very much. And I was asked to give a reminder, uh, especially to the mayor, that uh, make sure your uh, microphone is off. Uh, you know, otherwise we'll be getting some feedback. But once again, let me just say that it is wonderful to see everyone to be back and. You know, uh, you know, the people's business will be, uh, you know, better representative. We went through a challenge, and I thank everybody through their uh, patience going forward. Okay, at this point, we're going to go right into closed session. So um, the chair will entertain a motion to recess into a closed session pursuant to the exemptions of the open meeting allowed by Section 2.23711A, Code of Virginia Beach, as amended for the following purposes. Uh, publicly held property, discussion or consideration of the acquisition of real property for public purpose or the disposition of publicly held property where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect a bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body pursu pursuant to section 2.23711A3, Princess Anne District, Beach District, Lynn Haven District. Public contract. Discussion of the award of a public contract involving the expenditure of public funds and discussion of the terms or scope of such contract where the discussion in open uh, session would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body pursuant to Section 2.237A29, the Dome Site. Security Matters. A uh, discussion of reports or plans related to the security of any governmental facility, building, or structure, or the state safety of persons using such facility, building, or structure, pursuant to Section 2.237A19, and that is the Juvenile Detention Center. And then personnel matters, discussions, considerations, or interviews of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, disciplining, or resignation of a uh, specific officers, appointees, or employees of any public body pursuant to Section 2.237.11A1. And that is council appointees, Council boards, commissions, committees, authorities, agencies, and appointees. Do I have a motion? Second. Okay, if we can have uh, the roll call for the vote. Councilmember Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Lucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones is absent. Councilmember Moss? Aye. Let the record reflect that I will excuse myself for the first two items for a conflict of interest and will return at the end. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moss. Thank you. Councilmember Rouse? Aye. Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. Oh, okay, at this point, we will recess into closed session. convene our informal session and I'm going to ask for council liaison reports uh, just to let you know that uh, Mr. Jones uh, is late joining us he's at a um, professional association meeting and uh, Mr. Rouse uh, uh, had, to, had to leave so just to let folks know but any council liaison Mr. Moss two reports one MEDOC met last Monday if my memory serves me correctly all runs together but uh the NAS uh, CO briefed their uh, Oceana pl development plan, briefed that towards the board. Also, there was a brief from the maritime industry talking about how they had, they are 8,000 trades short yep. in the labor force. They also commented about the Christopher Newport survey that was done about, I'm thinking within the last 18 months, which showed that the marketplace that they're looking for to take those jobs does not view that industry favorably. So not unlike some of the issues our police department is facing in terms of the market of eligible people versus people attracted to the jobs. But for all those people listening, there are tremendous employment, long-term career jobs, well-paying jobs in the maritime trades. And there's a lot of apprentice programs where you get paid to work. 
but a large part of their initiative now is the long term meeting the need and therefore they're realizing they have to focus on the sixth, seventh and start in those grades all along the way of, of uh, educating people on those opportunities at the very front end when people are making those impressions about employment opportunities to sustain our workforce for that. That was the big issues from that. Relative to uh, the Community Development Corporation meeting last Wednesday, of course they talked about who they were not nominate for chair. They also talked about their efforts to do some additional development that they talked about with the, those are moving along nicely, as well as I asked them to, uh, I'm sure as Mr. Freeman probably conveyed to the city manager, I asked them to put together a incremental shopping list in $250,000 increments in the event that we were so fortunate, Mr. Mayor and Pierce, to get additional federal stimulus dollars that they would have one-time expenses capitalization to renovate their housing units to make them more habitable and make them more marketable, uh, that they'd have something shopping list to compete when the time comes. But all the members were present and uh, the board is uh, doing a great job. And as uh, the new staff, they're moving smartly out to keep their units full and uh, to meet needs in the community. And it was a great testimonial from a woman who had stayed in their places when she ran out and was able to get her nursing degree and then go out and get employed as a nurse and then get out into the regular housing market. It was a great testimonial service, but Andy Friedman and all the people there are doing a great job. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bellucci. Mr. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, last week we had um, the annual joint meeting of the Community Services Board and the Social Services Advisory Board. And um, during that meeting, um, uh, Director Eileen Smith of Human Services really reviewed um, their updated strategic plan <clears throat> along with the Deputy Director Deidre Bolden um, and uh, Angie Hicks and others. And, you know, every time I have a chance to attend that joint meeting in particular, I'm reminded about um, what great hands we're in with Director Smith and the entire Human Services Department and um, a as well as the um, all the volunteers who comprise both the Community Services Board and the Social Services Advisory Board. Um, these are a, a group of volunteers and professionals who work together um, to deliver really critical human services to members of our community, many of which are the most vulnerable um, members and are in need of the support <clears throat> and services that our city, officer, uh, our city off offers um, professionally and with the guidance and feedback from both of these boards. So I just want to thank everyone involved with those and, um, and just say how much of a pleasure it is to have the chance to be a liaison with them and to learn from them and work with them to support their efforts to serve our community. And on a related note, <clears throat> the um, Human Rights Commission received a briefing from the um, public defender, Cal Bain, and the Commonwealth's attorney on the subject of parity for um, the public defender's office, and it was very well received by the Human Rights Commission. And, um, and I just want to emphasize the wonderful, really great volunteer work that the members of the Human Rights Commission continue to do, particularly in the variety of committees they have um, during this really uh, pivotal time in terms of um, how we relate to each other um, in, our, in our community and with a renewed focus on equity and fairness. The folks at the Human Rights Commission have a, a really a baseline and established infrastructure to um, advocate for these, um, these issues within our city and they do a great job and I'm very grateful for the work they do. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for liaisons? Ms. Wilson. The uh, Southside Network Authority met last week and uh, made a decision to uh, issue a hybrid dual prong um, RFPs. <laughs> They're issuing a lot of RFPs, quite honestly, for <clears throat> the build out and the operations and marketing of the uh, broadband ring. So uh, part of what they're gonna do is to do the RFP for the build out, for the marketing, for the operations, and multiple different RFPs, and then uh, also to do a, um, one to do a turnkey with the public private sector um, 
it was a four to one vote. I had talked, I'd heard from Mr. Tower at the last meeting and I'd called everyone else to find out their position and I represented the super majority of this council, but uh, I, was, I was outvoted. But uh, anyway, it's, it's just one step in the process. So I just wanna let you know what happened. Thank you. Oh, oh thank you, Rosemary. Anybody else? Okay, uh, if I could just, uh, you know, quick update. Uh, a little over a month ago, we met, uh, along with what Mr. Moss said, uh, we met with a, a group of manufacturers in the country, and they're in the city, and they're having trouble, difficulty. And they're, you know, pretty good paying jobs and everything, but they're tr having trouble getting, you know, the workforce, and there's something to, to think about. Uh, yesterday, I took a tour of that really big, nice new facility, that, the old Owl Creek, you know, with uh, GTS and everything. And I'm pleased to say that they had a job fair for the SeaTac uh, community, and they were actually able to hire seven people. And they had a uh, they, they they had a little bit of a low turnout, but they're going to actively engage and get proactive because you know that was a major consideration that we talked about when we approved that. But I'll tell you what, if you get a chance, it is a magnificent facility that has just a plethora of, you know, op it's like standing in a hangar on an aircraft carrier around in some of the space that they got there. They're gonna be doing some incredible things and the potential of building more buildings and, you know, this could be a big boon and, you know, tremendous amount of money of Department of Defense, uh, you know, going there with extremely high paying jobs. And, you know, that's one of the things that we talked about. So if you ever get a chance to take a tour there, I think you'll be impressed that, you know, the decision we made is going to be in everybody's best interest. And then another tour I took uh, last week was the new um, annex on the aquarium. And if you have a chance to see there, my goodness, this is going to be another added attraction to uh, you know one of our regional gems and game changers. So, uh, but I'll tell you what, things are tr you know trending very positively. Okay, any city council comments at this point, Mr. Moss? I want to bring two things to your attention. One, which I've already sh shared with Mr. Jones, and all of you saw the uh, email that came, or was in the newsletter for the Lake Smith Terrick Civic League regarding a traffic light, additional traffic light on Independence Boulevard. We can't get one on, on North Great Neck Road, but they want to put one on, on Independence Boulevard, and people are concerned about the uh, traffic, additional through traffic it's going to create. So I have asked the staff, and I've shared that with Mr. Jones, to keep us apprised of that and to let us know before we make a formal commitment that we'll make sure that we know what the give and take is in the trade space between the neighborhood and the public at large. And this is an item that's on today, but I'm only mentioning it because I did read through all the details on the investment strategy. And on one of the pages, page nine specifically, it makes it, it talks about a quarterly report that we can receive regarding to the assets that are being uh, deposited and what their current market value is on a quarterly basis. I don't know if anyone else is, but I certainly would like to receive that report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moss. Mr. Jones. I, I, like Mr. Moss, would uh, like for the manager to get back with us on that traffic like it issue on Independence Boulevard. It seems to me like it's a little overdone, to be honest with you. And uh, will probably add to the traffic problem rather than uh, be beneficial. So if you'd get back with us, I'd appreciate it. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Ward. Since, since Mr. Moss brought up the Great Neck Road, and I don't know, John, if you saw the traffic engineering report that was forwarded. I did. Yeah. So, I mean, I, and I think it's important, and I, I don't know anything about the one on independence, but I would, I would certainly recommend to any, any council member who has a recommendation for traffic light to, to avail yourself of the staff's expertise on this. I mean, they provided a significant amount of information on the, the accidents on Great Neck Road, and I think it's information people didn't have as to as to actually the number of accidents there really were and what the causes were and that sort of thing. I think staff does a does a very good job on some of these reports. So I would just say for, for any of these where somebody is coming forward on it to do that, on Great Neck Road, for example, they're suggesting another six months of evaluation to see, and, and I think that's good. But I just I just wanted to throw that in there. Oh. 
Yeah, they did give a very unemotional analytical re uh, report. Okay, anybody else? Uh, Ms. Henley. Uh, some of you may remember that um, after the, or during the budget discussion for the 1920 budget when we were uh, uh, just completing the uh, Dewberry report, I asked if Dewberry could continue to look at the question of the wind tide flooding in Back Bay and see if there would be any opportunities for doing anything uh, to help alleviate that. And you agreed that 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 could go forward and I just want you to know that they have now gotten their final report out and I'll be glad to or Amanda will be glad to send you a, a, an online copy. I, I think it's really a good analysis that um, that they looked at. During that summer we had uh, focus groups of different groups of people involved uh, with the Bay who all talked about the concerns that they had. And so Dewberry picked the four things that people seem to uh, suggest or, or think would, would be uh, beneficial. Uh, a new inlet, uh, a pump, uh, an inverted siphon, and uh, marsh restoration. And in this report, they have very well analyzed each of those according to several different standards, and I think they've done a, a great job. They don't wind up making recommendations at this point because it's very preliminary, but I feel very encouraged that, you know, where before we thought there's nothing that can be done, that now I think there are some possibilities. Uh, you'll f find that, of course, the one that is in the near term, uh, the marsh restoration is viable. Uh, I believe we do have a federal grant that we uh, were able to get for this year to do some design of a pilot project uh, in the area near the Great Narrows that's just off um, uh, Long Island uh, called Bonnie Cove that fits right in with this recommendation. But there's a, a great deal of really good information in here. and. Um, I hope you would be interested in reading it, and we'll make sure you get a copy if you are. And I can't wait to really take this out to the focus group folks who met with us and let them know that there really was an analysis done of their uh, concerns. I, I think this shows that we really are listening to people, and and uh, it's good to think that you know it was taken seriously, and we've got all of this good data and this good analysis now. And I really appreciate. Uh, the work that, that they did to bring this forward. Thank you. And thank you. And I think uh, in the future, we're going to be getting some more good news about making progress in this regard with uh, uh, certain initiatives. But I think that'll become more forward, you know, during the budget cycle. Mr. Moss. Picking up on or piggybacking on Ms. Henley's uh, remarks, I know we, we didn't successfully compete and get our sea level rise study with cost participation from the feds. And I think we might want to, and I don't know where it would compete in our capital expenditures there, Mr. Mayor, when we look, but whether or not do we really want to wait another 18 months or do we really think that the value added is worth us going and funding that on our own to get a more timely response to fit in with our other referendum questions and the capital investments. I'm not saying what the right answer is, but I think it ties into, you know, delay is delay and and how much is time worth to us. I don't presume to know the answer, but I think it's something we should we should look at. Thank you. Great. Any other comments? Okay, thank you all very much for the liaison reports and comments. They were all very, very well articulated. Okay, Mr. Vice Mayor, we are ready for agenda review. Okay. Under ordinances and resolutions, does anybody wish to? Uh, we, we've got we, we, we have a speaker on every item, but um, we don't have any speakers in opposition to any of these items specifically. Does anybody wish to vote nay on any of the items or have any of the items pulled, Mr. Moss? As as I have shared with members in advance, uh, as the ordinance now stands. Uh, 
I couldn't support H3 because I believe there's two fundamental questions here and I'd ask for a division of the question because one sets a policy and I don't really understand, I'll need expo. As a matter of fact, I just would like to pull that item. Pull item from three. consent okay. and I can better address my issues under discussion. Okay, anybody else on the other item? I mean, can we ask any questions on that now or do we just need to oh, we're, we're gonna hear it out there, yeah. Agenda review, we're gonna pull it. Yeah, any other items? All right, I'm, I'm gonna be voting no on item six. Um, my, uh, in my district, uh, the largest civic league in my district has taken a position opposite this. So um, in keeping with the, the way things are now, I, I'm going to do what my district constituents have requested. So I'll be voting no on item six. I would ask that we pull it and hear some discussion. I would, if there's that much opposition from the north end, I would really like to know what their concerns are. All right. We'll pull it. Pull six. Okay. We do not have any speaker signed up in opposition at this point. Well, maybe Mr. Wood could share with you I mean, I, I, what we, you know. We all got an email from the <laughs> North Virginia Beach Civic League taking a position. I guess I missed it. Yeah, there was it's, one. it's on the email. Okay. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll pull six also. Okay. Under planning. Stay okay, Mr. Uh, well, we talk yeah. About it okay. Okay. Under, under planning. Items two and five, we have opposition. So item one, uh, short-term rental, uh, Quan Lee, short-term rental, 1612 Tallwood Manor Court, Centerville District, Ms. Wooten. So that's consent. All right. No. Hey, hold on. Moss, Henley, Wilson. I'm voting no. I'm voting no. We need to pull it because there's more than... Okay, so we'll hear that one. Okay, uh, Alfred, uh, item two, we're pulling item three, Alfred Nickel, short-term rental, 113 55th Street, Unit A, Blenhaven District, I'm fine with it. I had questions for staff, that, and Bobby said he would have the answers at tonight's meeting, so um, can we pull it? You wanna hear that one as yeah. well? Okay. Um, item four, Karen and Joe Allen, Old Hickory Investments, LLC, short-term rental, uh, 1361 Goose Landing, District 6 Beach, Mr. Tower. Okay, Tower says yes. Anybody wish to vote no? No. Okay, one, two, three, four. There's, there's five no, so we need to go ahead and hear that one as well. So right now, items one, two, three, four, and five we're hearing. Item six, William Joseph Wright, Jr., conditional use permit, short-term rental at 911 Pacific Avenue, Beach District. Mr. Tower. Six. William Joseph Wright, Jr. Five we're pulling. Okay. Does anybody wish to vote no on item six? So is that a no or a yes for you? You're voting yes? Okay, so that, that's a consent with, John, are you voting against that one? Correct. Okay. And Mrs. Hanley. Okay, item seven, D&D &D Creations LLC, Daniel and Kelly Joe David Revocable Trust, conditional use permit, short-term rental 2621 Highland Meadows Way, Prince Sand District. I really have to, I think we need to clarify some things with this applicant because I think they indicated what they want to do is home sharing. Okay. And I think that needs to be clarified. So we're gonna hear that one. Okay, so the only item on consent under planning is number item six. six. Yep. Under ordinances and resolutions, numbers three and six, we're going to uh, hear as well. Okay, at this point, let's go ahead and uh, recess and uh, you know come back at six. How does that sound, folks? Good discussion, good time management. Way to go. A couple questions. 